Today I'm going to be talking about the advantages and disadvantages of the three most popular concealed carry 9mm in the United States. So first I'm going to be talking about the Smith & Wesson Shield in 9mm. I think it's super important that we're talking about the one in 9mm. I've had a lot of problems with the 40 version of this jamming, but the 9mm tends to be very reliable. Some decent features, it tends to be decently reliable, decently accurate, um, chambers pretty easily. Here is the safety, so if you're looking for a firearm with the safety, you have it right there. It comes with a 7 round magazine and an 8 round magazine, meaning it's uh, 7 plus 1 or 8 plus 1. It has a very slim profile, if you can see that, that's a very nice slim profile making it easy to conceal. Uh, decent weight, pretty light. Some of the flaws of this particular uh, system is the grip here has a pretty sharp curve uh, making it feel thin in the hand. Obviously it has a very thin profile, all these firearms do, but this one feels particularly thin in the hand, making it a little difficult to purchase here. It actually has a pretty high bore access, so the, the muzzle access is actually pretty high above the purchase of your hand, giving it a lot of torque and muzzle whip as it as it flips up. If you can see the, the distance between the placement of my hand and the muzzle, it gives it a little bit more muzzle flip than some of these other models. And I will tell you now, this isn't particularly my favorite concealed carry gun, but it's definitely a decent option. It's well built and uh, it'll do the trick. Back up, back up. Moving on to what I consider to be a better firearm and a very good concealed carry firearm. So this is the Glock 43 and nine millimeter. My extended magazine has eight rounds in it. So here's the extended magazine with eight rounds. So it goes eight plus one. I added um, a uh, magazine release there so it's a little smoother in the magazine release and a couple other little features. One good thing about Glock is that there is a lot of modifications that you can make to your Glock to to upgrade it for your preferences. If you notice that the curvature here and the bump out in the grip is much more aggressive than we saw with the shield here and that gives it a little bit better recoil management. If we look at the purchase of our hand and our bore axis, the height, it's definitely a smaller distance and less torque. So you're going to get a straight back recoil management. So you're, you're going to get a faster target acquisition and, and less felt recoil essentially from that 9mm. Uh, they weigh approximately the same, but I will say that the Glock is a little bit lighter. I like the cutout here. I don't generally take my weak hand and cover the trigger well, but for anybody who does tend to bring that index finger up to that trigger guard, the pointed trigger guard is a lot more effective than this curved trigger guard. As you can see, it has no knurling there or no, no no striations, and then this one definitely has some grip and some striations and that curved feature for holding onto your index finger if that's how you prefer to get up on the pistol. Doesn't have a safety at all. That's one thing that it doesn't have. That can be a plus or a minus. I prefer it to not have a safety because it's just one extra thing to make the gun a little bit more complicated, and I'm not a very smart person, as you can all tell. Uh, I like the sights. The, it's just, uh, you know, put the drop in the bucket, so it's just a white dot there and then you have that horseshoe in the back that white horseshoe the acquisition of that is per decently quick it doesn't have any particularly good features they're plastic sites so they do get scratched as you can see right there the durability of those sites is not great the trigger pull on this is uh well it's like a glock so uh, decently it's pretty crunchy um you come up, you hit that flat wall, and then you crack through that wall. It's okay. Now we're moving on to the newest out of these three, the P365. Uh, P stands for, I don't know. The first thing I want to talk about is its most dominating feature over these other two, which is its magazine capacity. This small, compact, 9mm pistol holds a whopping 12 rounds in this tiny little magazine. Well, not this magazine because we're in California, this is California legal, but let's just pretend that we're in the, the free part of America and we can utilize that 12 round magazine there. Um, so that's the first thing I wanna talk about and that's the most important and most amazing part of this pistol. The second thing I wanna talk about is the grip profile being just a little bit thicker here um, which gives me a little bit better purchase on that firearm, which gives me better recoil management, which I'm a 
big fan of. I like the trigger, it's okay, it's not the best. Uh, we'll go over that right now so the firearm's clear, point in a safe direction. And so we have some take up here, and then we hit a little bit of a wall, and then there's a little bit of a mush section, and then the trigger will break, which can be either a good thing or a bad thing. So if you're focusing on your front sight and you need that trigger to surprise you to make accurate shots, then it's gonna be a fantastic pistol for you. So it's not a very heavy trigger pull, it's not gonna pull you off sights, but but you're sighting in on your target, you, pull, you, you hit that wall, you increase the pressure, and it should surprise you because it has a certain level of um, flex that, that is um, a little indecisive, um, which is, I think, by design, uh, to be honest. I do like the, the knurling, I like the grip on both the front and the back. Some people don't like that because they think that people shouldn't really be up here doing anything up here. Uh, I find it more options are better. Also, I find it to be stylish. I like the way it looks. I do like the fact that this particular pistol does not have a safety on it. Um, I like the functionality of the slide lock. I find it to be, I mean, it's, it is definitely small, but it is very effective at getting that slide back and releasing the slide if that's the method you want to use. Pretty easy to push that up with your index finger and get it to, get it to latch. A little bit easier to use. Um, out of these three firearms, this is the only one that comes stock with the Trijicon sights. This particular pistol comes stock with these Trijicon sights. They glow constantly, um, so you get that green light for any night fire or any low light, and you bring up your gun, and you can you still see your sights pretty vividly. Um, I absolutely love that. The magazine release protrudes a little bit more than I'd like, but it definitely is very effective at getting your magazine out. I really like the cut underneath here. It's very high up into the trigger well. Gives you a very good purchase on that pistol. I love the, the grip texture. It's not too aggressive, but good enough to hold on to. Overall firearm weight is, is very light. Uh, if you can't tell already, this is definitely my number one pick for concealed carry. No contest. There's nothing out there that's better that is this small, this reliable, that can hold, um, that fires this well, and all that considered, it's, still, it's the best pistol out there without the increased magazine capacity, but if you once you incorporate the 12 round magazine compared to uh, its competitors, it is light years ahead of what else is out there. The overall length of these firearms from, from the top of the slide to the top of the sights all the way to the bottom of the grip, uh, the, the Sig Sauer is much smaller. Uh, and then if we turn them around and point them at the cameraman, just kidding, there's no cameraman here. Um, you can see that the overall length that the Sig Sauer is considerably shorter than the other two. In the engineering, if you notice, if you actually line up the ejection ports here, you can see that the barrels are approximately the same length, but how much space they fit in the, the firing mechanism, the Sig Sauer is, is much shorter, which is a, a it's just a better gun all around as far as its engineering size, compact. We're going to figure out how much it weighs. Who would like to see how much these guns weigh? Uh, we'll start off with the Smith & Wesson at 35 pounds. Wait, what does it say? One pound, 2.5 ounces. Then we're going to go to the Glock, unloaded. One pound, 0 0.2 ounces. So was that two ounces lighter? Yeah. Okay. And then we have the SIG at 1 pound 0 0.4 ounces. So it's approximately the exact same weight, slightly, slightly heavier than the Glock 43, um, but that, that is incredibly negligible, 0 0.02 of an ounce. The Smith & Wesson is 2 ounces heavier, which is not very much, but when you're wearing it all day and it's flopping around in your, uh, your uh, Uncle Mike's holster, by the way, there's going to be a holster video coming up, so watch out for that. Inside, one of the one of the absolute best features of the SIG, let me show you this right here. Right inside the mag well, right there, if you see, it, uh, you should like and subscribe. That's, that's definitely super important right there. Um, just want to mention that. And um, I also wanted to make sure that you guys are aware of K Tactical and their new line of super simple but highly effective holsters. Oops.
these these holsters are absolutely amazing for all three of these firearms some really great features um, well we'll get into that in a different video but I just wanted to mention that they're out there and these guys are doing really good work and they have tweaked these things to be everything you want and absolutely nothing you don't want and the amazing stylish red interior uh, just warms my cockles so to rank these firearms from one to three, uh, this one is going to be my third favorite gun. It's approximately two to three hundred dollars for this right now. This one right here is going to be my second favorite. This is going to be a four hundred and fifty dollar gun or so, and then this one right here is going to be five to six hundred dollars, and it is it is my favorite uh, by far. These two shoot pretty similarly, but this one with the magazine capacity is it's just a much better product. See, it doesn't seem like rocket scientists to put bullets in a magazine, but I have no idea how it took this many years to be able to do this. But here is the Sig Sauer 12-round uh, magazine. I don't know what kind of engineering goes in there. Uh, I know it says 10, but th th let's just pretend like this can hold 10 rounds. It's a double-stack magazine. It is definitely pretty wide, but um, but the grip profile is it's perfectly fine. Um, and this right here is the Glock 43 magazine with a two round extension. So it holds six rounds plus two. And as you can see, uh, the size difference is definitely significant. Let me uh, line those guys up. We're gonna do it like that, I guess. There you go. Uh, even with the 12 round magazine, they put a little pinky extension on there so you can get a better grip. I don't know. I just find it incredible that this is where we're at. Back up, back up, back up! Oh, are you still getting video? Shit. K Tactical. It's the holster that'll save your life. I hope that's not passive.